Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Korlick with Figure It Out Productions. The following video is part of our quick shoot series. Hey guys, it's Adam here and welcome to Playload. This is almost all my video game pickups for the months, plural, of uh, August and July 2016. Uh, so, I got a lot of backstory stuff to tell you, a lot of stuff's been going on. Um, if you don't care about any of that, you just want to see the games on this table, feel free to skip to this time code and I won't hold it against you. It's okay, I swear. But if you want to know more about why things have been the way they are on the channel and stuff, I'm happy to explain that right now. So, okay, here we go. Um, yes, yeah, so, <laughs> I've had an absolutely insane summer. It's kicked ass, uh, but it has resulted in me not really being around much. Um, so, first thing I want to note about this specific video is that I've had way more pickups than this over those two months, uh, but you guys have seen most of it through a lot of videos that have already come out, and some videos that still haven't. Uh, and most of them have been pickup videos, we're going to talk about that in a bit, but uh, as a result, none of those things will be in this video. This is just stuff you haven't seen, uh, in, at least in the other videos. Uh, so, uh, where do I even begin? Um, like I said, I've been traveling a lot this summer. Uh, I think it all kind of started with uh, too many games in Philadelphia back at the end of June. Uh, they brought me out to the convention, and I had a really great time, and I did videos on that. Um, and then, like, a few, I got home back to Chicago, and I was home for a couple of days. And then uh, I went off to Ireland, uh, and I was there for a week. Did videos on that as well. Uh, hopped over from Ireland to uh, the UK, where I was there for two weeks. Did videos on that. In fact, I did so many videos on that, there are some that are not even out yet at the time this video is released. <laughs> I'm, I'm a tad behind schedule. Uh, but again, you'll understand hopefully why. Uh, so I was in the UK for two weeks, and I left the UK on July 27th. Got back home to Chicago, and I kid you not, I was home. And I say home in quotations because I wasn't even... This, you, what you're looking at, this is where I live. I was not here. I was at a different. I was uh, at a different location for eight hours, and most of that time I spent just, you know, getting some sleep, uh, taking a shower, unpacking, repacking, that type of thing, um, because I had to turn around and go back to the airport and catch a flight up to Toronto uh, in Canada for Con Bravo, which was a, a convention I went to. The video on that has not come out yet. It is done. You'll see it uh, sometime in September. Uh, hopefully, you'll watch it. I, I guess I should say. Um, <clears throat> So yeah, I did that. Then I got back home to Chicago uh, after uh, like a week up there. Uh, I got home, this location, I was here for about a half hour uh, before I had to get into my car and drive up to Wisconsin for a couple of days uh, and do some work up there. Then when that was done, came back here and I took all the footage I had shot in uh, all those three different countries, uh, edited it all over the course of four days. Just nothing but editing. It was a nightmare. But I did it for you guys, because I love you guys. Um, but yeah, I compiled, all those I compiled all that footage, uploaded all those videos, and just kind of set them to time releases over the course of the month, so that, because I knew it wasn't going to be around that much, and I wanted to make sure you guys had content to watch. So, uh, then I, uh, the reason I was in such a rush was that the, the night of the ninth, okay, that's, I finished the last video, right? Uh, then morning of the 10th, I had a flight out to San Francisco, California. Um, the reason I was going out to San Francisco is I was contacted by Ubisoft, um, and they wanted me out there for a press event. Uh, so the press event was a lot of fun. I got to play um, Watch Dogs 2, uh, the crew, uh, the new the DLC for the crew that uh, is coming out, um, Champions of Anteria, Grow Up, South Park, The Fractured But Whole, and uh, For Honor. Uh, a lot of fun. I had a great time. I know a lot of people don't like Ubisoft, but I'm telling you, the people who actually work there, at least in the San Francisco branch, are fucking awesome people. And here's why. Uh, when they contacted me and said, hey, do you want to come out to this thing? I told them, like, you know, I'd love to go, but I can't. And the reason I can't go is I'm going to the Missouri Game Con, which is, uh, uh, it was, <laughs> what was it even? It was August 12th, 13th, and 14th. Um, whereas the Ubisoft thing was August 10th and August 11th. So on paper, it sounds like there's no conflicts, right? But the logistics of getting me from San Francisco on the 11th, uh, the night of the 11th, to San Francisco, or uh, to St. Louis on the morning of the 12th, while having to fly back to Chicago in between, was just a nightmare. So I looked at their tentative schedule. They were like, okay, okay, fine, we'll fly you from San Francisco to Chicago, and you'll get back to Chicago at like 6 a.m. Meanwhile, my St. Louis flight is at 9 a.m. So I wouldn't even have left the damn airport. 
So I would have had to do like a whole night just staying up because I can't sleep on the planes. And uh, I would have, you know, it, it just was like, ah, uh, I don't know if I want to do that. Um, and they were like, no, but we really want you to go. So tell you what, how about we'll do this? They sprang for an extra night at the hotel uh, and they just flew me to St. Louis directly from San Francisco. So that was fantastic. Uh, again, Ubisoft gets a bad rap as a corporation, but I'm telling you, the people who work there are fucking awesome. Uh, so then I got to St. Louis and I went to the Missouri Game Con, which we'll have videos uh, on uh, about that uh, that come out later this month as well. That was fantastic. So, spoiler, it was awesome. So I got back to Chicago and then the next day I had, I'm not even kidding, I had fucking jury duty. <laughs> jury duty is the worst, man. If you, uh, thankfully, I didn't get selected, but man, that was that was brutal. But anyway, so I got home back back to Chicago, and I was here for uh, a couple of days before I got a message. I shit, I think it was only one day before I got a message from 2K. Uh, and they contacted me and said, "Hey, like you know, next week, do you want to come out to San Francisco?" And I was just like, "Okay, yeah, sure." Um, don't get me wrong, I'm not complaining. I was just like, Jesus, like, <laughs> how much am I gonna be moving around here? Um, but no, that's fine. So I said, "Yeah, okay, sure." Um, and I, while I'm figuring out the flight plan with them, I get another email from 2K. Like, the same company emailed me a second time to a totally unrelated press event. The first one was for Bioshock Collection. The second one was for Mafia 3. Basically, so they're like, you have any, in a week from now, come to San Francisco, and then a week after that, come back. When I say come to San Francisco, I want you guys to understand these companies, they pay for the flights, they pay for the hotels and all that stuff. It's just, it's really you're just your time and your energy that goes into it. Um, so I was just like, is there any way we can kind of group those together? Is that possible? And they were like, actually, yes. So if you wait two weeks, then you just do them all at once. I was like, perfect, let's do that. So I had a really good time playing those games and uh, doing that event and stuff. And then now I'm back home and I'll... Yeah, so the point I'm striving to make here, that hopefully you understand, is I haven't been home much. So I haven't had really the opportunity to just go out and like game hunt and stuff like that. Um, and uh, that's also why the content is what it is. Because I've seen a bunch of people complaining like, I don't like the way the channel's going, it's becoming nothing but tours and pickups and blah. It's like, yeah, because that's what I've been doing. That's what I've had time to make videos on. That's the content I have. Uh, sh I assure you, when schedules go back to normal, you'll get more of the original, normal type of content of me here talking about something opinionated. But that's that's what I've got right now. Uh, and I, I hope you guys, have, at least some of you I know, will enjoyed this stuff. I, I always thought it was neat. See, I personally think that stuff's neat, being able to see uh, game stores from other countries. Especially if you're ever considering going to another one, you have some good idea of like, oh shit, I didn't even know that place was going to exist, but I'm going there anyway, so now I have somewhere else to go. If you're into games, I think that's cool. But if you don't agree, okay, that's fine. But then again, why are you watching a dedicated pickups video if that's the case? Just saying. Now, moving on, let's talk about actual pickups, shall we? Uh, first up, let's go with this. This was actually shipped to me from the UK while I was in the UK. This is a vinyl record of Outrun. Uh, of course, Yu Suzuki's classic uh, racing game. Um, I've listened to it, to be honest, this is my probably my least favorite one that they've put out. It's like high quality and stuff, but the actual music was never one of my favorites. But again, I was never that big of a fan of the game, so maybe that's why. Nevertheless, I got Outrun's uh, you know, data disc record, so very cool. Um, now, uh, when it comes to actual games, <laughs> the vast majority of stuff that you see here is basically spillover from the UK and from Canada. Stuff where I, you know, I, I did a bunch of videos on those places, uh, but I didn't uh, do videos on all the locations. Like there was a lot of charity shops or thrift stores as we think of them here. Um, and places like Game, which is kind of like GameStop, and, you know, stuff like that, CEX and all that shit. Uh, I didn't do videos on any of those places. This is just kind of like the leftovers, except for this first pile. So this is the only North American stuff, this pile right here, <laughs> is the only North American stuff I got in the course of these two months. Um, this one, uh, I'll show you first. Gravity Rush uh, remastered for the PlayStation 4. Um, this was always on my wish list. Uh, we did videos on this on my uh, other channel, Game Society Pimps. Um, which, incidentally, if you're interested in those like Ubisoft and 2K games, we have videos on them on the other channel. So feel free to check them out. Um, but yeah, we did videos on this, and I, I thought the game was pretty cool. Obviously, there's a physical release, and that's what I wanted. Uh, but I wasn't in any real rush to get it. And when I was at the uh, Missouri Game Con, which again, that video has not come out yet, there were multiple people asking if I had picked this up yet, and I was like, no. And every single one of them told me, you should really look into it because this game's getting a lot harder to find. 
And I'm like, really? Because it seems like something Sony would have mass produced the crap out of, but apparently not. So yeah, I found it on Amazon for relatively cheap. So I was just trusting everybody's judgment and that's why I went for it. Uh, next up, I got Tokyo Mirage Sessions, hashtag or pound FE for the Wii U. Um, <laughs> so I think it was in the previous playload, like back in June, uh, I had talked, I did an update on like, you know, the, the Wii U games I had picked up and I mentioned how this one had come out, but I hadn't picked it up yet and I would eventually get it when I found it cheaper. And a bunch of people in the comments were like, dude, you're an idiot. You should get it right now. It's a, you know, it's a, an RPG that's limited on the Wii U. You'll never find it again. It's going to be like a hundred dollar game eventually. And I was like, okay. Cause I was pretty confident I was going to be able to find this cheaper. I was right. Uh, Best Buy ended up running this at one point for like $40, plus Gamers Club Unlocked, so you ended up getting it for like $32, so I was like, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I was waiting for, and that's what I got it for. Uh, next up, Dead Island Definitive Collection. I was actually sent a free copy of the PS4 version, physically, um, by Deep Silver. This game is by them. They had sent me a PS4 copy, so I showed it in a video. And a bunch of people were like, oh dude, get rid of the PS4 version, get the Xbox One version. And the reason for that is the uh, the PS4 version uh, only... Ha All right, so this game, if you're not aware, it has three games on it. It has Dead Island, uh, Dead Island Riptide, and uh, a new game, I guess, or a bonus game, Dead Island Retro Revenge. Now, the PS4 version, I guess, only has Dead Island on it physically, and then there's like a code in there that downloads the other two games. Uh, whereas the Xbox One version actually has all three versions on disc. And I was like, oh shit, because as you guys know, I'm all totally pro physical content when it comes to my video games, so I thought, yeah, that's the way to go. That's not the first time that's happened, by the way. Like Saints Row 4, like the definitive edition, um, came with uh, Get Out of Hell as a bonus, uh, and the PS4 version, Get Out of Hell, was a download. Whereas the Xbox One version, it was physically in the on the disc. So you got to be careful if you're into physical content on this generation, because every once in a while, there's one version of a game where it'll be totally physical, and then the other version, it's like half digital. So just be aware of that. that this is an example of that. And Saints Row 4 is the other one that I can think of at the moment. Uh, this is kind of a fun one. This is a unique story. Uh, so. I don't know if you guys are familiar with another channel called D-Dave. Uh, there are a couple of buddies of mine who also live in Chicago. They're most famous for being like the GameStop dumpster divers. Their biggest video ever was they were the guys who uh, resold games they found out of a, a GameStop dumpster back to GameStop and then GameStop called the police on them. Uh, they didn't actually get in any trouble, but that's their biggest video. It's, it's got over a million views and kudos to you guys. That's awesome that that happened. Um, but uh, we're buddies and I asked them if I could come out with them on a dumpster dive and they said sure. So uh, I did that, and uh, I don't know if the video on that specific dumpster dive is released at the time this video comes out, although it probably is, but either way, check out their channel. It should be over there at some point. Um, but yeah, I went on a dumpster dive with them, and I, only, I found two things. I didn't do too well, but I did okay, considering what I like. Uh, first thing I got, this was my favorite of the two pickups, uh, Burger Time for the ColecoVision, only because I don't really pick up ColecoVision stuff very often. Um, and you can't beat free. So, burger time for the ColecoVision. Why the hell not? Uh, and the other one I got was, I already have this game, but I guess this is an upgrade. Uh, Turning Point Fall of Liberty Steelbook Edition. Oh yes, <laughs> for the Xbox 360. This game is terrible. Um, I don't know if you guys ever played it. It was, uh, it's a first person shooter that kind of came out around the time Call of Duty just exploded. Like 2008, 2009, if you guys remember that time frame where all of a sudden people realized, holy shit, World War II plus first-person shooter equals tons of money. At least that was the theory. Uh, and this was one of the games that tried to do that. It's by Codemasters, which is usually a pretty good sign, but not in this case. The only thing that was interesting about this game was the, the story hook that it had going for it, which was the premise was it was an alternate reality where the Nazis had successfully invaded New York, and you're basically a New Yorker guerrilla fighter who's just trying to get rid of the Nazis. Um, so I've beaten this game before. It's terrible. <laughs> um, but... Uh, a free steelbook upgrade for it. Shit, okay, fine, no big deal. Um, okay, so moving on, <sighs> I kind of sold my soul a little bit on this one. I felt really awful doing it, but I did it. Um, so I was talking to a, a buddy of mine named uh, Jake, who is uh, Zebular on YouTube. Uh, he's one of the guys who's running Missouri GameCon. You'll see him again in those videos when they come up. Uh, we were talking about like, you know, uh, small run PlayStation 4 titles and just like obscure titles because I was showing him a lot of the imports I picked up, which are this pile, you'll see in a bit. Uh, and he uh, mentioned this game I hadn't heard of. And uh, what it's, well, I'll just show you. It's called Song of the Deep. 
Now this is a, uh, Alright, so it's like a little indie game, right? Um, and the thing that's interesting about it, and sad, this is also something that my buddy Shane, aka Rerez, had mentioned to me. This game was published by GameStop. Yeah, fucking GameStop. Uh, a chain I pretty openly boycott. I fucking hate GameStop. It's like, uh, and I apologize to you if you actually shop at GameStop because you have no choice, but if you do have a choice, don't fucking shop at GameStop. It is like the worst place to buy video games. Like. You go there if you know nothing about video games. Like, the thing I always tell people about GameStop is that's where people who know nothing about video games go to buy video games. You should not buy video games at fucking GameStop. Um, but in this case, I sold my soul a little bit and I had to go in there because this game was exclusive to that store. Uh, so that's why I wanted to pick it up. Fortunately, it's only a $15 game, brand new. Uh, I don't know if the game's actually any good, but it's just the fact that it was like, uh, it's a single store exclusive. Uh, and it's a nice little small run game that they were doing. It's also available on Xbox One if you prefer that. Um, but while I was in there, I did look around because I was already in there. And to, to their credit, they had something I actually was looking for and I was very surprised to see. The Jackbox Party Pack for Xbox One. Uh, now this is an odd release because this came out on the Xbox 360, the PlayStation 3, the PlayStation 4, and the Xbox One. The other three versions are extremely easy to get. But for some reason, the Xbox One version is very hard to find. Uh, I first noticed that when I tried to rent it from Gamefly, and they like pulled it from their listings. Checked it on Amazon, it was like all the copies were like used for like sixty dollars. This is supposed to be like a twenty dollars game. Uh, couldn't find it on Best Buy. There's no listings for it. Like I, I checked a bunch of places, and you know nobody had it. Um, I don't know if it was recalled or what the deal was exactly, but for some reason, the Xbox One version of this is not easy to come by. Uh, and the reason I wanted it wasn't actually because of the rarity. In this generation, I typically, if a game is available for the PS4, unless there's some sort of weird exception, like the game content isn't actually on disc, I'm looking at you, Dead Rising, or not Dead Rising, Dead Island, <laughs> looking at you, Dead Island Collection, um, unless that's one of the cases, I, I typically don't go with Xbox One versions. The reason I wanted this, though, is what this game consists of is a lot of mini games, including games like Fibbage, which Fibbage is a fun game. I got to play that at uh, at Microsoft's actual studios a couple years ago. It's a cool game. Um, a lot of these games require your phone or they require a tablet to interact with. And I just find that the Xbox versions of those apps that Microsoft puts out are a lot more stable and user-friendly and frankly more enjoyable than the PlayStation alternatives. I don't know what it is, that's just been my experience. So that's why I wanted it because I thought the game would actually be more enjoyable to me on an Xbox One. I had no idea that also happened to be the harder version to find. Regardless, I got it at GameStop, so I guess thanks GameStop. And while I was in there, I found one more thing because it was only four bucks and it just looked like a good laugh. Body count for the Xbox 360. Um, this game is notoriously cheap, so it must be notorious shit because I don't think it was mass produced to hell. I think it just wasn't very good. But uh, for four dollars, fuck it. Um, so that's the end of the North American stuff. So let's get on to some European pickups. Uh, again, this is all spillover. But uh, the first one is this, A-Train HX. From the look of it, it's some sort of like train city simulator game. Um, unfortunately, this game is region locked, so I can't actually play it. It is a PAL exclusive, that's the only reason I picked it up. I should note that from here on out, for the most part anyway, these are all PAL exclusive titles. That's the primary reason I got most of them. Um, but yeah, this one, unfortunately, I can't do anything with because of that reason. Uh, although, if it's ever made Xbox One backwards compatible, then I can use it because they dropped the region locks on that. Hopefully, I swear this would be so great, but I don't think Microsoft's ever going to do it. If they ever update the Xbox 360 like as a parting gift to just drop the region locks entirely, that'd be great. But I have no reason to think they're going to do that. Um, next up, also for the 360, also region locked, also PAL exclusive, Under Defeat HD Deluxe Edition. Uh, when I picked this up... I was under the impression that uh, this game as a whole, Under Defeat HD Deluxe Edition, was exclusive to Europe. I knew there was a PS3 version, which was region free, and there was an Xbox 360 version, which was region locked. However, the uh, PS3 version is substantially more expensive, whereas the Xbox 360 version is very, very cheap. Um, so I saw it, I was surprised to see it, and I picked it up. Cool thing about it is it also comes with a bonus music CD, which is obviously not region locked. Um, and again, if they drop the region locks, I can use this game. Um, this was actually originally a Dreamcast game, and I played the shit out of it on the Dreamcast, really liked it there, so I'm really hoping they update it like that. Um, however, the small addendum to this, uh, the PS3 version, as it turns out, was released in North America, so go figure, you can actually find it. But uh, the, the 360 version, only released in Europe. Now, 
onto the OG Xbox. And we have some gold here. <laughs> a lot of just sports garbage, to be perfectly real with you guys. But uh, just PAL exclusives, stuff on the list, needed to get it, right? Because if you're considering a full set, especially when you're in another place with regional exclusives, you get the fucking games, especially the cheap ones. Uh, so here it is. Uh, World Championship Snooker 2004. Total Club Manager 2004. LMA Manager 2003, which according to one of my buddies was one of the more uncommon ones. Uncommon does not mean valuable, it just means you never see it. But yeah, <laughs> LMA Manager 2004. Probably the only one here that's actually interesting, Gotcha, uh, which is actually, you know, a game. Uh, I, look, people always give me shit saying, oh, you hate sports games. It's like, no, it's not that I hate them. I just don't play them. I have no real interest in them. They're just things you have to get as part of a collection uh, if you want things like a full set. Um, at least that's how I feel about it. But I, I know I'm never going to play England International Football 2004. I'm never going to do that. But, uh, yeah, whatever. Cool thing about this one, though, is it actually includes a bonus DVD on, like, because I guess they won the title that year. Uh, and I from what little I can tell, uh, and uh, it's just a bonus DVD of them winning or something. Uh, Cricket 2005, Club Football 2004, or just Club Football. Um, if you guys saw, I did another video where I was talking about Club Football 2005. Uh, th this is kind of an interesting release because Club Football 2005 and this one, which is I guess technically 2004, uh, there's a lot of variants of each one. There wasn't just one game for each. What they did was they actually customized it to every single team in the league. So in this case, it's Chelsea or Chelsea Club Football, whereas my copy of Club Football 2005 is Real Madrid or Real, or because I said Real Madrid and everyone wanted to hang me for it. Uh, Real Madrid, I think is what it is, 2005. So like every team had their own variant. Fuck that, man. I'm not trying to get every single one. Just one copy of each is good. So I have Club Football. I have Club Football 2005. We good. Championship Manager Season 02-03. Championship Manager Season 01-02. And of course, no collection will be complete without Championship Manager 2006. So that's it for the OG Xbox. Uh, now on to some PlayStation 2. Uh, first one up is kind of amusing. It's by this company called Blast, and I've mentioned to them before. Uh, as it turns out, Blast is a company that would go after a lot of intellectual properties that were well known for other reasons. Uh, a lot of them being American, some of them being, of course, you know, also British, and other ones being even things like Australian. Uh, franchises that were popular at one point or another, and then they would give them some sort of video game on the PlayStation 2 well after they were irrelevant. Uh, such examples would include Home Alone. They made a Home Alone game in 2006 based on a movie that came out in 1991. And if you play the game, it has nothing to do with the fucking movie, like, at all. So I, I think they just had a really good producer who was willing to somehow cut these deals. Uh, it also seemed like a lot of these games were just kind of made, and then they thought, what movie could we kind of remotely connect this to? Okay, got it. And then that's, that's how the games came to be. But nevertheless, they are kind of fun to collect just because they're so weird. Um, this first one is... Thunderbirds, uh, which looks very familiar. The puppet style, of course, looks a lot like Team America, but that's because Team America wanted to emulate Thunderbirds, not the other way around. But uh, there you go. Uh, Pacific Warriors 2, Dogfight. Uh, just a bunch of World War II games that came out over in Europe that we never got, particularly by this company called Midas, uh, which is kind of like, not the stamp of gold, but the stamp of shit. Uh, they all have terrible, terrible ratings, but nevertheless, exclusives, and they're funny. I want you to understand, because I'm sure I'll be like, why are you buying all this shit that you know sucks? You have to understand, like, nothing here <laughs> costs more than a pound at most, at least from these two particular consoles. It's just fun to buy shit like that, because you know you can't find it at home, and they're just, there's something about it that's just quirky. Uh, anyway, that's how I feel. Mr. Bean, this is again by Blast. Obviously, Mr. Bean is a British intellectual property. There you go. This one actually does look like, I believe there was a cartoon of Mr. Bean in, in Europe anyway. This one actually does look like that. James Pond, codename Robocod. Um, yeah. <laughs> Fighting Fury. Yep. Charlotte's Web, based on the 2006 movie. Again, by Blast. And uh, finally, Casper and the Ghostly Trio, again, by Blast. 
Um, I, okay, so here's the, I found this out. <laughs> this is gonna be a little convoluted. I found this out, this new piece of information, recently. Um, so there are videos that will come out after this where I don't know this piece of information. So this is gonna sound surreal. But as it turns out, because I kept asking in a lot of these videos, and I might even ask it in videos again that have not been released, why the hell there were so many PlayStation 2 exclusives that came out in Europe? Um, especially really low quality ones, ones that seem like they should never pass quality control standards. Uh, for example, when, like the OG Xbox right here, right? Uh, the OG Xbox had like 70 European exclusives. Sega Dreamcast had 24. The Sega Saturn had 32. Those are the kinds of numbers that are usually there. The PS2 had over 800, which is really fucking weird. And I kept asking people, like, why the fuck did that happen? I mean, I know the console was popular, but damn. And especially there's so many that just are just pure shit. It turns out there's a really specific and interesting reason for that. In 2008, Sony made the, uh, the, the PlayStation 2 open, uh, not, I think they call it open platform. Uh, but in Europe only. Essentially what that meant was they dropped all the developer fees. So basically any company could make a game for the PlayStation 2. And the only thing, you didn't have to pass any quality control standards anymore. The only thing that had to happen is you had to basically pay Sony to make the discs. That's it. No development fees, no quality control standards, none of that shit. You just had to pay them to produce the discs physically. Done. So that's apparently why there was a so much shovelware for the PlayStation 2 in Europe, and why it lasted until 2014. Or, well, technically 2013, but yeah. Damn. That's why. So, now you guys know. But when I ask this in a future video, and you're like, I thought you knew this, that's why. You'll also notice I have a haircut now, and my hair's gonna instantly grow back in future videos. Movie magic. Okay, moving on to some games that are actually kind of worthwhile. I got a bunch of PlayStation 4 stuff. Again, these are all regional exclusives, and these are actually kind of cool. Zombie. You guys might remember this. This was a Wii U game originally. Um, in Europe, it got a physical release on the Xbox One and PS4. Now, this is a recent release. This was actually just put out. Um, cheap game, too. It was only like, I want to say, £10? Uh, which is not bad for a brand new title, or relatively brand new title. Uh, yeah, cool. Yasai Ninja. This game is fucking terrible, but it got a physical release in Europe. This War of Mine, The Little Ones. This is a cool game. I played this a bit at PAX Prime 2015. Um, I actually asked at the time if this was going to get a physical release, and then deep, it's made by Deep Silver. I don't get them, because they do a lot of physical releases over here, but there's a lot of stuff they put out in just Europe for some reason. Uh, and what they they basically just told me right then and there, like, Europe, yes, North America, no. I was like, why? Well, I, like, I, <laughs> I don't make that decision, man. So there you go. Uh, this one is not an exclusive, but this is what happened with this game. This is Nero. Nothing ever remains obscure. That's what it stands for. Um, now, this game was, at first, I believed a European exclusive because it's by Soe Desco. Very few of their games ever, or the games they publish, very few of them ever come out in North America. Uh, so I assumed it was on that level. And uh, I'm not even kidding. I bought this game, and the next day, Day, I, was still in the, I was still in the UK. The next day, it was announced for a North American release, and I was just like, motherfucker. So I could have returned it, but it turned out it was still a lot cheaper to pick this one up than to buy it uh, when I got home. So I was like, fuck it, I already have it, it's cheaper, it's whatever, it's done. So that's why I got that. This one's a really cool, uh, I would think probably the most worthwhile one, but okay, opinions vary, I'm sure. The Heavy Rain and Beyond Two Souls Collection. If you're not aware, those two big PlayStation 3 games got re-released on the PlayStation 4. And in Europe, it got a physical release. The other thing that's interesting about this collection is that it uh, contains two discs, because they were both Blu-ray games to begin with. So you, I was, I, when I first bought it, I was like, how the fuck did they squeeze both those on one disc? They didn't. Uh, so that's it's just a, you know, a release with both of the games. Um, unfortunately, what I have learned about this release, though, is that the version of Heavy Rain that's on here is buggy. There is a patch to fix it, but it does kind of suck that it is kind of forever a buggy version, which shouldn't have been the case since it was a remaster, right? Um, Beyond Two Souls is fine. Um, the other thing that sucks about it is it's not exactly what you would call a definitive edition. Uh, none of the DLC they produced for either game is on this, uh, which is kind of lame, but that is how it is. 
if there is a North American release at some point, which we haven't heard anything about that being the case, hopefully they not only correct the bug and put that on disc, but they also include the DLC, and then this is superfluous at that point. But, for now, that's what exists. Uh, I also got this, the Escapist Walking Dead Edition. Uh, this is kind of cool. Uh, the Escapist was a, another European exclusive, but they had, a, I guess, a semi not as known as well known sequel specifically about The Walking Dead, which is a show I'm sorry I have not yet watched, but I picked it up anyway. Uh, this one, not an exclusive, but uh, it was much cheaper than the North American version and it was right there. So I got it. Child of Light for the PlayStation Vita. Uh, I still don't even own a PlayStation Vita. I have a PlayStation TV. I don't know if this game is compatible or not. And I don't mean because of region coding. I know the console is region free. I just mean PS TV is kind of a crapshoot. It's never, you're never really sure what's going to work on it. Um, the reason I picked it up, even though, so it comes with a bunch of DLC, which I'm sure has been redeemed, or even if it wasn't, I know I would need a European uh, PSN account to use. So why the hell did I buy this? Because it was only like two pounds, and I know the North American version is much, much harder to find. The thing about Child of Light is this was the only physical edition of this game. Even though it was on a lot of different platforms, this is the only way to get it physically. And you guys know me, physical content all the time. So that's what I want to Um Just walking around, I got a couple of PS3 games. This first one I had no intention of buying, except that it was only 50 pence, and I knew it was an exclusive. So I was like, fuck it, for 50 pence, I'm going for it. Invisibles. The Lost Kingdom for the PlayStation 3. Nope, no real interest, but hey, exclusive. This one I was really excited about because this was the PS3 game I had been looking for for the longest time. Like, the last two times I was in Europe, I was looking for this game. I found it in Germany, but it was the German version, and it was like 60 euros. And I was like, no, the hell with that. Um, and it is Wipeout HD Fury. You can ask my buddy Ben, aka Shen Muso, we found this in a charity shop for five pounds. So I was like, fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> um, especially after Brexit. I'm sorry, I don't mean to get political. I'm not British, so I have no say in that matter. But because of Brexit, the value of the pounds sank dramatically, and it really made buying shit a lot cheaper as an American. Pre-Brexit, I'm pretty sure a dollar was, or I'm sorry, a pound was worth about a dollar eighty. Post-Brexit, it was worth a dollar thirty. So that's a, that's a big savings when you, you know, you do math. So, yeah, point is, that was nice. Uh, now, here's my last European pickup, uh, and this one surprised the fuck out of me when I saw it, because I had no idea this was a thing, and apparently it's a fairly recent release. For the Xbox One, finally, we have a European exclusive Xbox One release, and it's an odd one. Goat Simulator, The Bundle. Oh yes, Goat Simulator, you, remember, you guys remember that game? For whatever reason, this got a physical release in Europe on just the Xbox One. The best part about it is it comes with all the DLC, and all the DLC is on disc. There you go. Uh, so that's that's very neat. And it was only, I believe, 10 pounds brand new. Not bad. Not bad. Um, so that's it for European pickup. So I told you guys I also went to Canada right after I got back, and uh, so now I guess I'll show you those things. Uh, when I got there, my buddy Scott the Canadian picked me up. We went out to a, uh, basically like a pawn shop, except more high-end, called Buy and Sell. Uh, I had had some luck there in the past, and then other times I completely struck out there. Same with him. So you never really know what you're going to find. And this time we actually did pretty well. So the first thing I got there was an N64 memory card, or memory controller pack, as they call it right on here. Um, now, I had no real interest in picking this up, but it was only $5 Canadian, which is the equivalent of about $3.50 US, around that. And, uh, again, I still had no interest in picking it up, but Scott was like, you have to get that. I'm like, why? He's like, that is an insanely good price for one of those. You never find them that cheap. And he's an N64 guy. He's got a full N64 set, except for PAL and Japanese stuff, so it's not really full. Ha, 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 Scott, you know I'm right. Uh, but, yeah, so I, uh, I was like, okay, I'll trust your judgment. So I went ahead and picked it up, so now I have a, a spare controller pack. Uh, the other thing I found there it was actually really amusing to see uh, was the new... Xbox One controller. Uh, you got it's. This is the the lunar white edition. It has those like rubber grip textures on the back. It has that extra like um, microphone port. I believe that's what it is on the bottom of the controller. It's the new improved one. Um, now I had actually first tried this controller in Europe, like at a game. Like I was, ooh, that's nice. I hope I get to get one of those one day. And the thing that was interesting about it was the store had it brand new, sealed. The only problem with it was the box was damaged. Someone had traded it in for whatever reason, 
Um, and the guy who ran the store didn't know it was anything special, so he just marked it as like a generic Xbox One controller. Uh, so I believe it was only 35 Canadian, something like that. So it's like about $20, and it was essentially completely brand new. Um, it's, it's very, very cherry. So I was like, I don't usually buy extra controllers, but I've, I've been using that Day One Edition controller since the beginning, and I kind of want to hold on to that one just because the Day One Edition is kind of cool. Um, so I figured this would be a good way to get a new controller for relatively cheap, and it is a better controller anyway, so went ahead and picked that up. Uh, also got a couple of GameCube games. I'm starting to pick up more GameCube stuff that was not available on the original Xbox, uh, just because I, I, that's, I have no reason to double dip, I guess, but uh, kind of want to go after the ones that didn't exist on the original Xbox. And of course that means you have to pick up shit like this. NFL Quarterback Club 2002. Thankfully, very, very cheap. I believe it was like three Canadian. Uh, and then, <laughs> this is another reason this sucks. Uh, I have to pick up games like this. Brats, Rock Angels. Again, it was like $3 Canadian. Problem with this one, though, is that the disc doesn't work. Uh, I got a buddy with one of those like $3,000 disc cleaners, so I'm going to have him run the, the game through it. Hopefully, I can get it, the, the disc functional again, because it's bad when you have to buy something like this when you know you don't really want it. It's just kind of as part of a collection. It's even worse when the disc doesn't fucking work, and you have to actually do something about it. <laughs> Whatever. That's why I got those. Um, then... Uh, we went out to a store called Retro Replay uh, in Cambridge, Ontario. Uh, I've done a video on it, actually. I did a video back in, like, January. Please check out the video. You can get a sense of what the store's like. The owner there is a really cool guy named Mike. Uh, he has really good prices on stuff. His, his inventory is constantly going out because he's got good deals. Uh, but So he also gets a lot of stuff in. That's why it's a cool store. Uh, but anyway, uh, so you go in there, you look for stuff, and I, I, I actually managed to find a couple of things. Um, the first one I was a complete impulse buy. Uh, I never, it's for the PS1, I never buy stuff for the PS1 just because I never really have a reason to. But in this case I bought it because like, I had no fucking idea this game existed. Batman and Robin. Now obviously a very shitty movie. I'm sure the game is fucking horrendous. But I didn't know it existed. I didn't know there was another Batman game. I thought it was just, I mean, I knew about Batman forever because that was a, a very prominent game. It was on a lot of consoles. You know, it was on the Genesis, it was on the SNES, the PS1, the Saturn, etc. I had no idea there was a Batman and Robin game, which I think was only on the PS1. Maybe on PC as well, but you get my point. Um, so I, I basically bought it just for that reason, because it just amused me. Um, then again, for GameCube, like I said, I'm going after the stuff that you can't really find, uh, or doesn't exist on the original Xbox. Uh, Surf's Up. Again, cheap. You have to understand, I, I, I'm not going to buy stuff like this if it's expensive. We're talking, I think, 5 Canadian. Again, that's like 350 US. Uh, then I got some OG Xbox. Uh, Urban Chaos, Riot Response. This is a game I never see anywhere. Uh, at least I hadn't. <laughs> All the time, whenever I was looking for this game, it was one of those cursed games where the manual doesn't exist, or the case is sun faded, or the disc has a blockbuster sticker, you know, some horrible shit. Or the price is bad. In this case, you got all three. Manual's good, uh, spine's good, uh, disc is fine, price is good, etc. So went ahead and picked it up. And then this one caught my eye because I don't understand it. Uh, this is Tomb Raider Legend. Now the reason I don't understand it is because the case is different than the normal one. Uh, on the right corner it says reserved now. On the back in the upper right corner where it's proof of purchase is, it says it has an FPO over it. And then on the spine, it says Tomb Raider Legend instead of Laura Croft Tomb Raider Legend like the official release does. Um, so I picked it up just because I wasn't really sure what this was. Clearly some sort of promotional version. Beyond that, I don't know. Um, the manual and the disc are identical to the official version, so if anybody has any information, I'd love to know. But I don't think it's really worth anything. I think it's just one of those quirky things. Um, so that was about to conclude it for the month. But I received a package, and I'm going to show you guys what it is. If you guys saw, earlier this month I, I did a video when I was in Ireland. Uh, it was on a video game store called The Rage. Uh, very cool store. And the day I posted that video online, they updated their Facebook with some new pickups they had got. And one of them really caught my eye. And I was like, oh, why? Why wasn't I there when that was there? So I contacted them and I was like, is there any way, I know it's an inconvenience because I'm not in Ireland, I'm not even in the European Union, is there any way like, I can convince you to sell this game to me and ship it to the States? And they were like, of course. Um, so I got this game for really cheap. And as a bonus, they threw in, uh, I mentioned it in the video, 
they have these bags uh, they were willing to give out. They gave me one for free. They sent it along with it. It's just a bag from the Rage. Uh, you know, it's, it, it calls itself a record store, and it is. It has vinyl records, but it also has a lot of video games and stuff in there, too. But yeah, it's just a cool, like, tote bag. But uh, the game I wanted that they sent me is for the PlayStation 3. It's Japanese, and it's based on my city. It's called Rail Fan Chicago uh, Transit Authority Brown Line. <laughs> I mean, of all the weird, obscure things to make a video game on, this might take the cake. So if you're not, you're not from Chicago, you've never been to Chicago, like any major city, we have a mass transit system. You know, it's called the CTA, the Chicago Transit Authority. It consists of buses, it consists of trains, etc. Now the trains have multiple lines. There's the blue line, the red line, the brown line, the orange line, the green line, etc. This one is specifically about the brown line. I don't even know why, because the brown line isn't even one of the bigger ones. It's, it's just like, it basically just runs in what we call the loop. Uh, it runs near the Sears Tower, and it runs around a lot of the, the, the business district, and that's kind of about it. So I was just like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, I had no idea this, this was a thing. So I, I just absolutely wanted to get it just to see how accurate it is. Unfortunately, I haven't really had a chance. Based on some of the photos, it is just a unique thing uh, because I actually live in Chicago to be able to see. So that's it. That's, that's the only reason I wanted to pick it up. That's just... Just weird, just absolutely fucking weird. But uh, yeah, so thank you to The Rage for being willing to uh, ship that out to me. And they uh, gave me a really good deal on it too, because that is an expensive game. Um, but they, yeah, I won't say what they, they sold it to me for, but it was, it was a nice deal on their part. And again, thank you for the free bag. Um, so yeah, that's it guys. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Thank you again for your patience. Again, stay tuned to some of the other videos that are coming up. There's some, oh man, there's some cool stuff, especially from the Missouri Game Con, you guys are gonna like. One of the biggest video game, the biggest video game collection I've ever seen. I got to do a video on. You'll see it. You'll see it. But uh, yeah, man, a lot of cool stuff. A lot of cool pickups from the Missouri Game Con. So that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. See you all later. No, no. Oh, shoot. <laughs> That's gaming right there. That's what we call gaming, son. You already know. That's how you do it. <laughs>